Good afternoon, everybody. The last time I was officially in Brussels was on the 30th of January 2020. It was the day before we were due to leave the European Union, and I waved my flag in the Parliament. They cut the microphone off because alternative views have never been particularly welcome here. Uh, and this is my first official visit back. And I'd like to say that it's really good to be back in Brussels and that things have improved, but clearly they've actually got rather worse. What has happened over the course of the last 48 hours is simply monstrous. This is national conservatism. There are people coming on this platform over the course of these two days representing political parties that will top the polls in their country in the European elections of June this year. Hopefully nine countries, but who knows, it may be more than that. We have, of course, Viktor Orban from Hungary appearing on this platform as well. And yet, I mean, I knew I wouldn't be welcome back in Brussels. And having one venue cancel, well, OK, I can live with that. But for two venues to cancel is absolutely outrageous. And what you may or may not know in the audience now is that this venue, which accepted this booking last night, and we give huge thanks to the Tunisian owner of this business for his courage in allowing free speech to take place. But what is happening as we speak is he is receiving phone calls from the local mayor. The police are being encouraged to come in and shut down this conference. They have even been speaking to the caterers. So the food hasn't arrived. The plates haven't arrived. Worst of all, the drinks haven't arrived. <laughs> but I shouldn't make a joke of it. Because they have told this Tunisian owner, who believes in free speech, that if he carries on with this conference, they'll make sure he goes out of business. His wife is being threatened. This is what we're up against. We are up against an evil ideology. We are up against the new form of communism. This is nothing less than that. And if anything ever, if anything ever said to me that Brexit was the right thing to do, that leaving this place, regaining our national sovereignty, even if we could have carried it out better, that recognising that you cannot be an independent, democratic, self-governing nation-state and a member of this monstrous union with its ideology behind it, today has told me, I should never forget it, we were right to leave. No question. But of course, none of this comes as much of a shock to me, because for my last few years here, I found life had become pretty intolerable. There were restaurants that wouldn't serve me. Coffee bars opposite the Parliament that wouldn't serve me a cup of coffee going into work in the morning. And even the pub, even the hack pub up by the European Commission, which should have had a sign on it saying sponsored by UKIP, <laughs> given the amount of money we spent there over the years, even the landlord of my local pub in Brussels, which we frequented and we mixed with people who work with the European Commission, even Mr Juncker would pop in from time to time. And I never caused a scene, never had a row. We were just after work going for a drink. Even the pub, even the publican said to me one day, Nigel, I'm sorry, you can't come here anymore. Otherwise, the European Commission will put a boycott on our premises. So I know all about cancel culture, I know all about venue culture, and what may have come as a shock to many of you today, and perhaps hopefully to our friends in the press, doesn't surprise me at all. Because you see, when we talk about European Union, when we talk about the building of a new global superpower, when we talk about Brussels as the epicentre of the globalist project, no alternative view is allowed. 
No alternative view is tolerated. It's quite acceptable, of course, to say that you're sceptical, that you think perhaps integration is happening too quickly. All of that is perfectly allowed. But to question the very basis upon which all of this, all of this is done is unacceptable. I think Tony Blair summed up the European Union to me in the best way of anybody in modern times. He said that it was a project of peace. And if we go back, getting on now for 80 years, to the end of World War II, the argument that there should be a forum in which European countries should get together, the argument that the more people trade with each other, or as some would say, the higher levels of intercourse that occur between countries, but I'm not sure that always works, that that leads to less likelihood of war. And it's right, isn't it? If you trade with each other, you are far less likely to go to war with each other. So we understand why the, the idea of a closer European body, be it you know, a European Council or a European Economic Community. We understand why these things came into being in 1945 after two monstrous wars in the space of 30 years. But it wasn't very long, of course, before it was all hijacked. And it was there in the small print, in the Treaty of Rome. And I'll come back to those treaties in a moment. But Tony Blair said, this was a project of peace, it is now a project of power. And how right Blair was. It is a project of power. It is a project that salami slice by salami slice takes away the power of the individual nation state and hands it to those at the centre. And those really at the centre with real power are, of course, those that are not elected. Now, I used to have enormous fun with Mr. Barroso when he was Commission President, when for some reason they put me in seat number 20 in the European Parliament in Strasbourg and Brussels with the Commission President in seat number 21. And this went on for over a decade. And I honestly think that I enjoyed my time in the European Parliament more than anybody else in the room did. They felt, quite often, I think, discomforted by me. But Mr. Barroso used to say, but Nigel Farage is wrong. I was elected. I was elected by the European Parliament. Well, technically, that's true. But guess how many candidates we had to choose from? One. <laughs> and this is their idea of democratic accountability. It is a big battle. But you have to recognise something. What has happened here in this epicentre of globalism is the coming together of a new unholy trinity. It is the trinity of big politics, of big business, and in particular of big banks.